All right, so here I just thought I would uh, go over a bit more detail of how I'm making some ballistic plates using ultra high molecular weight polyethylene uh, sh uh, fabric and sh or sheets and ceramic tile. Um, I'm aiming for hopefully, certainly level three, hopefully even level three plus um, at the end of this whole thing. But so this is a roll of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene that I got I bought off of uh, Alibaba it's a uh, hundred and sixty grams per meter I bought a total of about four four meters I used I've used so far maybe just under half to about half the amount or half the four meters so far on my uh, chest plate the first plate here you see this is just a simple eighth inch thick piece of a fiberboard okay this was my original template it's kind of a modified swimmers cut it's not as uh, extreme as a swimmers cut but it's not as shallow as what a typical shooters cut looks like so I kind of split the difference there it's double curved it's lost some of its curvature over time but uh, I don't really need it to hold the the shape as much now since the uh, the plate itself is pretty far along. This holds the shape for me now as I add layers to it. But how I put the curve into it is simple enough. I Once I got my first um, sheets cut out from the template, I then started using just the sheets as my template and started to work on curving this. And how I did that is most of the curve is right here. And that's what you see there plus a little bit this way and that that was done by just I wetted this thing both sides so that it was wet all the way through not soaking wet you don't want this thing to fall apart on you you just want it definitely wet all the way through and I did it right here primarily and then some right down the middle and then what I did is I used bricks I piled up a couple high on bricks here on this end where it's the most extreme curvature and then a layer of bricks or a brick on this side and a brick on this side put it up on top of it and then laid bricks and weights right here in the middle to push it down and push it down and what would happen is I would let it sit that way until it started to dry um, I didn't let it get all the way dry but then I'd come in spritz it again with water to soak it through again uh, if necessary, add a bit more weight to it, and I just kept doing that over a few days, um, coming down to check on it every couple hours, um, and adding a little bit of water or re-wetting it as necessary. Uh, when it finally got to about the curvature I liked, I just let it sit there until it dried. Then I removed the bricks, took it off, and checked to make sure it would hold the shape. And it did, so I was able to then use that as my template for actually um, laminating the uh, sheets together using simple uh, fiberglass resin. Uh, now, as I was using this, I didn't just leave it like this and then lay sheets on it and do it that way. I used the same bricks um, around it that I used to form it in the first place so it would make sure to hold its shape. Uh, laid that down would put a sheet down on there, like this is the first sheet. I then cover this side with a thin layer of resin. Make sure to spread it out. Not thick, don't want it gooping out over the sides. Well, it'll do it anyway, but I didn't want it all thick and heavy, just enough to wet the whole thing. And then lay the next layer on top of it. Do the same thing, and I do that maybe for eight to 10 layers before I'd take a pause. Well, at each layer, I'd also work out the bubbles, try and get out as many of the bubbles as I could, then lay down the, um, more resin, put down a new sheet, same thing, work out the bubbles, and I did that eight to ten layers. Then I would leave it by putting a brick weight in the middle here to help hold it down. You don't want the you want pressure on here, especially in the middle, so that the resin doesn't slowly pool down and thicken around the middle here. And just the pressure of that helped keep it in the shape of the template 
fiberboard itself and to keep the uh, resin from pooling. And I would just do that, let it set for a few, a couple hours, then come out, lay down some more resin, put down some more layers, about eight to ten again, and just continue the process until I got to about the thickness I wanted. And then I just let it cure for a couple days. Um, and that's at this point right here. It's this is not lightweight. This isn't like a commercial plate right now where they, I guess, uh, pressure form it all together. It's uh, it's it's not as heavy as a steel plate, of course. It's probably not as heavy as a uh, ceramic plate, though it may be. Um, this won't float like a commercial one, but uh, so but most of the weight from this is coming from the uh, fiberglass resin. But it should work out pretty well. Um, when I'm done. This is the body facing part. This is the front face. What I'll do is cover the front face here with tile. Here's the tiles I'm using. These are two inch hexagonal um, tile, porcelain tile in this case. Uh, I'm still cutting it, so I'm not quite done yet. This, it's sitting at the moment on the template, which is more of a shooter's cut for my back plate. Um, I won't curve it as much either. Um, but this is the tile I'll be using over the front. Once that's on there and I've got it um, all nice and dried and formed, I will then cover the whole thing with sheets of Kevlar. And I got these also from Alibaba, though I think you can also get them on, uh, on Amazon. I've got enough, I've got multiple of these. I don't remember, it's maybe half a dozen sheets of this. Each one is plenty big enough to uh, cut to size to wrap around this plate with some scrap left over. So there's plenty of Kevlar here. This will cover over the entire plate, but especially the uh, ceramic to help catch any splatter uh, from bullet strikes to protect from spallation and fragmentation. Now what I'm actually going to um, what I'm actually going to test against with when I fire is going to be this. I'm using scrap polyethylene here to make a duplicate of what I'm doing here. Um, it's just a small square. I will layer it exactly the same as I did this to the same thickness and then cover it with some tile. And then I'm going to shoot it with a 308. I've got a 308 FMJ and I've got some uh, 308, well I've got some, it's 762, but uh, AP bullets that I've loaded up, and so I will also try, assuming it survives a hit from uh, an FMJ without shattering, and if the FMJ does not penetrate through the whole thing, the tile and the polyethylene, then I will test with AP on a clean section of it and see how that fares against that. And I'm hoping for level 3 plus, maybe. But there you have it. It's taken a bit of time to uh, slowly do this thing, but it's really simple and not terribly expensive.